Yeah. How high did they grow? Uh, I don't really don't really know. But the biggest of those logs is about the maximum my mill will handle. So okay. I might even have to trim a bit off to get the mill to accept it because my mill will take logs up to 600 million diameter. So that's curry pine. Cowrie. Cowrie. The native Queensland uh, timber? Native to the Wide Bay area here where we are. Okay. There's virgin scrub just over there. There's cowries growing naturally in there. There would have been cowries all over this block of mine originally before before they were cut out. They were highly sought after in the early days. Yeah, okay. As what, a furniture grade timber? Yes, yes. House building. Pretty sappy on the outside there, hey. Yeah, they've only just been cut a few days ago. I was lucky to get those. <laughs> they would have, if I hadn't have got swooped on them, they would have finished up in the chipper. Oh no. Okay. Alright, so. Major score. Let's see how you mill them up. Okay. Okay. So this is the mill. It is the mill. What makes it somewhat unique is that the drive belt runs directly onto that tyre alongside of the blade. Yeah, that's impressive. Well, we'll put the cover back on. You know, when I first built it, different people looked at it. I couldn't help noticing how often people said she was a little doozy. So that's what it's officially become. It's the little doozy. <laughs> and we'll start the noisy thing up and I'll sh this This log I've cut down into pieces that are 110 mil wide. And now I'm going to cut them off at 32 mil deep. I make my supers a 400 mil deep and my timber when it's dried and dressed is usually 28 or 29 mil. So I'm starting to rip this down into timbers for making supers. That are pretty good, didn't it? Yeah, see, so it, it doesn't leave much to clean out of. These are my mounting brackets. They uh, made from 20 mil galvanised steel, which I've given a lick of paint to. This particular one is what I think is a fairly secure version in that when it's erected and a hive securely placed on it, it's very hard for someone to come along and pinch it. And I'll explain why. It'll mount to any solid vertical surface. It can be a wall or a post or a tree. Mm -hmm. um, All of my bees sit on one of these. Now you notice that I've got screw holes there, there, there. Now we take 
a hive mounted on there, it just sits on there. It becomes quite it's quite solid, isn't it? It is exceptionally solid. I've had branches fall off of trees and come down without knocking them off. Wow. They tend to make a bit of a mess of my tin lids though. But these screws that I use here, these stainless steel screws, they aren't a Phillips head, they take a square drive. Mm -hmm. And if you get one of those square drive screws and you put on the undersides, your average opportunist thief that scales your fence and in the moonlight to pinch your hives will come and grab it and then find it's attached. And if he's smart enough to bring a screwdriver with him, it won't work unless he's got a square drive and not too many thieves will have a square drive. <laughs> but when, when you've got a lid on that, that looks pretty attractive. The mount's out of sight. Yeah, it's nice. Love it. I think there's... Well, I often say to people that your hives are probably the tidiest looking hive in Australia. I've yet to see one, so... Well, they've got to be functional. Challenges out. And I love... I love working with timber. So, I've got to make something that makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. And uh, makes a lot of hide buyers feel good too. There seems to be no no shortage of people tracking me down, even though I've been a bit hard to find. I came up with a way of getting bees out of hollow trees. I didn't call it a deduction. I didn't know there was, or well, perhaps it hadn't been thought of then. I call it piggybacking. It involved drilling a hole in the back of the hive, there, and it involved two plates that, wrong way up, that married together. Now, imagine, once again, this lump of wood is a tree with a hollow, that's the hollow there. Now, it's a bit more convenient around here where they're virtually all hocking's eye because they don't have a lot of residue built up around the outside the entrance. But if I took with me my little 12 volt grinder, I could just grind a bit of timber till I had a pretty flush face. Sometimes you'd have to use a, a bit of no more gaps to, to seal it. At one stage I had 92 of these hives the hives attached to hollow trees. I just take it up and put it up against the, the tree and drill it into the, in the place. The hive is securely mounted without making any stands or that to sit it on. You don't have to have any connecting tubes. But if you want to, when, when if you're lucky enough, and the bees colonise that, that hive, you can, before you take the box away, if you want to leave it there and have the bees also access the access the tree without going through the hive, hmm? 
you can unscrew this and put that in between the two surfaces and that gives that channel for the bees to access the tree. Wow, aren't you clever? Without, <laughs> without going through the hive. Yeah. That's the whole old, oldest hive I know about. And if you'd like to just walk around the side of the shed, I'll show it to you. I feel very honored to have had this hive given to me for safekeeping. Apparently, well, there's a, a, fa a family, uh, old Harvey Bay people, boys about my age and a little older, that claim they could remember as schoolboys when their father transferred that nest from a tree in their front yard into that box. Now that box is an old fashioned fruit case and you can see how thick the walls are about 10 mil thick. When I acquired it it had been for many many years located higher up under the eaves of a shed that faced directly north like it does here but I've got this a little bit low because it's getting sun now um, if I had it up about that height it would only get the sun during the winter months but not in the summer months and if you look at those bees coming and going they are flat out working the paper bark tea tree which is in full flower here at the moment. See how they're ripping that pollen in. And the paper bark tree, tea tree is very good species for both honeybees and these little fellas. Yeah, wow. That hive, I believe to be somewhere like 65 years old. Yeah.